I have some terrible news to report. My friend and colleague David Menzies, beloved by many um, public interest journalists, was just arrested. I'm telling you to leave. So you should leave. I think it's incredibly important that you know. I'm not talking. And I'm talking to you. He was there reporting on the corrupt mayor of the city, Patrick Brown. Are you ready to leave now? I am not, sir. I am here to. I'm going to help you off the property. That's all. Well. Well, he under arrest? He's not under arrest. I well, swear to you that we will go through such a disclosure procedure and we will have every one of the officers there and we will answer the question who made the order? to arrest a journalist doing public interest journalism on a public sidewalk. I'm not under arrest, so you can't touch me. Are you wanting to leave then? I am not. What they have given to us is an opening to give that rotten city hall an enema. I didn't come to play games. My time is too valuable to come here and play games in a Brampton parking lot. Believe me, there is a very important constitutional principle at stake. Now look at this, four cars and all you cops pulled off the shooting file. You must be proud. You're not listening to it. Oh, You're not one, listening not two, to it. Not three, but four police cars came to arrest a journalist? The ideal outcome is that we go out there and no one interferes with our civil liberties. Yeah. That's all we want. Yeah, we just want to do journalism. Well, here we are again at the Earnscliff Recreation Center. This is the home to Patrick Brown Hockey Night in Brampton. Him and his mostly berry buddies come down here typically at five o'clock on Wednesdays. They've been doing this for several weeks. Sometimes he shifts the time around folks so he can uh, try to give us a slip. As you know, we've been told by security and police, we are persona or media non grata here. We've been given these, um, I don't know what it is. It is a, from Paladin Security, notice prohibiting entry. This is evidently some sort of a, a trespass notice, but it's published on uh, paper with a corporate logo on it. it the lawyers we've run this past say it, this isn't worth the paper it's written on. You may as well give somebody a, a card from Community Chest or Chant saying go to jail, go directly to jail, don't pass go, don't collect $200. Well, we were shooed off the property last week, as you know. Get off the property. Okay, sir, walk faster, get off the property. Uh, but we're back and we have lawyered up and we're going to see if Patrick Brown uh, does indeed come back here for his weekly game of shinny. I've got some questions for him, for example. First of all, why has he lied so much? We also have the big boss man himself, Ezra Levent. Yeah, he has come down to the Earnscliff Recreation Center too. Well, David, it's great to see you. Thanks for breaking this story. That was an amazing exclusive. <laughs> that look on his face when he realized that he was caught red-handed. <laughs> I'm not here today on that story. You've done a great job. I think you've covered all the bases. I'm here for a different reason. Because I saw that when you came here last week to ask these questions, a bunch of Brampton taxpayer paid private security tried to shoo you away. That didn't work. And then three police cars plus an unmarked police car of the Peel Regional Police pulled up right here. A bunch of cops came out, argued with you for a bit, and you had a lawyer there, and said, get out. And you did a pretty good job of saying, no, we're journalists, we're here to work. But at the end of the day, the cops started pushing, physically pushing. Oh, and Ezra, I'm sorry to interrupt you, but speak of the devil and he shall appear. Here comes the first Paladin security van. So uh, I imagine uh, this is the initial volley of fire. We're probably going to be told that we're trespassing. I mean, mall security, private security, whatever. They're guys working for a living. That's fine. But they're not real police. Um, when the real police came and honored the false trespass notices, pushed our people and said, get out, I thought that's unacceptable. Because we're law-abiding people, we generally support the police. We don't like this anti-police 
mania that's gripped much of the world. Yes, 100%. But we also believe in freedom of the press. And there's simply no way that we will be deterred from reporting on public property, on a public sidewalk, a public interest investigation into a public person, namely the mayor. So uh, it looks like a gentleman has presented himself here. You can see we brought with us a lawyer named Giddy Mammon. And maybe we should get a... And sorry, I think I overheard you, sir, say that we cannot be here. Yes, you guys have been trespassed. You guys are not allowed to be here. What do you mean by you guys? My, I... Rebel news. <laughs> Rebel news <laughs> What's Rebel News? It's the media. It's the media, so the media is being trespassed? Usually the way it plays out, Ezra, is uh, first the uh, Paladin uh, Security Service come, then the police, at obviously a cost of thousands of dollars. And if I can just point out, as we were discussing earlier today, our good friend Joe Warmington of the Toronto Sun has a front page story. This happened in Brampton, folks. It was a shootout at a cemetery with the ostensible reason to add three more people that were um, there to... Uh, I guess, bemoan the loss of a loved one at the cemetery. Um, this is real crime, isn't it, Ezra? This is this is attempted murder, and yet they're, they're going to send out three, four cruisers today? Well, we'll see. I'm here because we have ourselves a freedom of speech problem. We have ourselves a rule of law problem. We have ourselves, perhaps, a politicization of the police problem. I, part of me really doesn't care what private security does. I think it's gross that Patrick Brown is apparently using taxpayers' money as his personal security force. I think that's in poor taste, but poor taste is Patrick Brown's middle name. <laughs> what I'm more concerned about is the Peel Regional Police, which has a good reputation. And if they are gonna be uh, running errands, like it's one thing for this gentleman here to run errands for Patrick Brown. I get it, you know, it's his job. He's not a cop, I don't have to listen to him. But um, at least not on public property where I am. But it's another thing when the cops come and say the, the same thing. What's that? Sir, police will be contacted if you guys are refusing to leave. What's my name? I'll show you, we'll find out. Well, you, you said I've been uh, trespassed. I don't even think that's a verb. Uh, but but, but um, why would I leave? You guys have been trespassed, please make your way. What does that mean, I've been trespassed? I have not been trespassed. Sidewalk, you guys are more than welcome to I'm on the sidewalk. No, not, not over here. This is City of Ember property. I'm glad you acknowledge that. Hey, can you do me a favor? Can you show me your license? If you don't show me your license, you break. This is the Private Security and Investigative Services Act. Um, on, every person who's acting as a security guard or holding himself out as one shall, on request, produce his or her license. This guy here is not the problem. This is just some guy. I'm not going to be mean to him. But if a Peel Regional Police Officer comes and says you can't do public interest journalism on the public sidewalk of public property, we've got ourselves a constitutional issue. Giddy, what do you make of what's going on so far? Well, it's interesting that a member of the press is being denied the opportunity to report on government misconduct. I mean, it's, uh, it's not a little right. It's a right that's guaranteed under the Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Without a free press, you have a government that can act with impunity, and that would be a tremendous threat to democracy. It's not a rule or regulation. It's contained in the supreme law of the land. I, I don't propose to negotiate my freedoms with uh, a corporate security team. They're, they are what they are. It's a blue collar job. I respect people who work for a living. I'm just not going to give up my civil liberties to stand on a public sidewalk to do public interest journalism about a public politician by asking to see their security guards license that's my way of saying i know my way around fellas don't don't try and think you're going to take away my freedom of speech and they're not they're not they're standing over there that's fine how do you do ezra levance my name do you shake hands or just wave in the time of pandemic? No, no, I think uh, one of these guys called. Hey, how are you? 
I'm Ezra Levant. Some of my colleagues, how are you today? Good, and why are we back again though? Doing journalism in the public interest on public property. That's not true, sir. May I introduce my lawyer, Giddy Mammon? He's a bit tougher than my last lawyer. He's a bit better briefed on the law this time. This gentleman here has been trespassed already several times. Not true, officer. That is true. Yeah, it is true. And that's what like they're telling us. Been here, right? And he's just advised me that he's requested that you guys leave the premises and you're refusing. So now I'm asking you to leave the premises. Oh, there so is the fourth vehicle here. You're going to do that. So the thing is, is, trespass to property act. It's an arrestable offense. If you refuse to leave, you can be arrested. So I'm just asking you, you are you refusing to leave or are you going to be leaving the property? We have not violated the trespass to property act. They serve you a notice, though. It's a flawed notice, both in form and substance, sir. This is what we were served, sir. It's got Paladin's corporate logo on it. It's you know what? what I, we're not here to argue with yeah, you about here that. Here I'm here to tell you that you're trespassing. Yeah, but it doesn't work that way on public property. We're not. You know, let's hand it over to Giddy Mammon, who's ready, uh, who has been practicing for this moment by studying the law, unlike our friends from Paladin. Go ahead, Giddy. Yeah. So, so the Charter of Rights under Section 2B gives them freedom of the press. Okay. Charter of Rights is the supreme law of Canada. It's important. It's an important right. It's enshrined in the Charter because without that, you have no checks and balances on government. So there's case law, very clear case law, that talks about trespass and balancing the rights of the press. Uh, you are here to enforce the law as you uh, determine it exists. The Charter of Rights allows them to be on public property and report to the public what they find. That is a far greater interest that outweighs anything in that trespass notice that may have been issued to Mr. Menzies. Now, if you have some authority that suggests that when you embarrass the mayor of Brampton, you lose your right to freedom of the press, then clearly that would, that would be the law. But there just isn't such law. Now, we came here today to exercise 2B rights under the charter. Now, you can arrest him for doing that, but we came here to make sure that the right of the press is not abridged by a little yellow piece of paper. So you have a job to do. You have to decide whether you want to de-escalate the situation, let this man report, right, My or arrest him. My today is to tell him to leave, right. and so he needs to leave. Right. It's as simple as that. No, no, I completely but, but understand. understand. Like, we're not coming here wanting to arrest you. That's not, that's not the case, right? We've been here, I think this is the fifth time we're here now. This isn't what we want to do. That's not what we want to do. We just want to keep the peace and enforce the Trespass to Property Act, which means that all we're asking you is to leave the premise. That's all we're asking you. If you fail to do so, then you can be arrested. I don't want to do that, though. You don't agree with the Trespass to Property Act, and no. then you'll have to have your day in court and go deal with it that way. No, I, I completely agree with the Trespass to Property Act. It's very good. It's very useful. The way it was used in this situation is unlawful. It's clearly unlawful. That's my role is to challenge legislation. If you, if you challenge you, that in court, right? I'm just here if, to enforce right. the Trespass to Property Act. The end goal here. Hey, I'm just here to do my job, sir. Practice journalism. Issued a trespass under the Trespass to Property Act. Huh? It needs to be yeah, Okay, but well, this is in the police. No, 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 but hold on, sir. Hold on. Sir. Look, look how many police officers you have. This is in a court testimony right now. I know. I know. Is, you, want, you understand that you decided how many officers to deploy and... I get called, I have to attend, right? Of course you have to attend. But you chose to come with, four with this many policemen. You know right Who's wasting resources? Do you guys come away from the shooting at the cemetery to tackle David Manzies? No, we're not. Pulled off the shooting, the shooting case? We're not talking about who sent four cars? I don't know why you have to be so challenging, sir. All we're asking because I'm a journalist on a public property, that's why. They said that they've trespassed this man with the hat. They're liars. Well, I don't... I've got the form right here. Well, with all due respect, sir, uh, Giddy Mammon is my lawyer here today. Public property. This works on private property, mate. This is my law society card, okay. And I and I don't advise people to break the law, okay. I do... No, no, you, you, you believe that I advise my clients to break the law, but I did not actually do that. I'm asking you to make a thief. I understand that. I understand that. Okay, we're not here to argue, but right. it's, as simple, hold on. Right. it's as simple as this. You're not supposed to be here. They've told you to leave. You're not leaving. I'm telling you to leave. 
so you should leave. Right? I think it's incredibly important that so you know. I'm not talking to him. And I'm talking I'm to you. Talking to and him. I'm talking to you. you because have you have to know this. I'm sir, talking to you. After, you can talk to you are you willing? Are you ready to leave now? I am not, sir. I am here to. I'm going to help you off the property. Let's go. Well, He's under arrest. He's not under arrest. Well, well then, what, why are you touching me off, sir? Off. Why are you I, will arrest, that's assault. Huh? I will arrest you that's for TPA assault. then. Let's you go. Know, that's assault. Well, you're, I'm not under arrest, so you can't touch me. Right? Are you wanting to leave then? Arrest no. him or go away. You, you said that there's two Arrest options. him or go away, mate. Just okay. arrest him. Okay, I'll arrest, arrest you for TPA. Away. Okay. Let's do that. arrest him. What do I do now? Would you like me to put Peel Regional or Police, or the sir? Brampton's finest, arresting a journalist for up? trying to ask questions of the mayor. Okay, again, They're errand boys for the up? mayor. Can we back up? Peel Regional Police pulling their men Let's off of a mass up. shooting at the cemetery. It's an officer safety issue. Wait, this it's an officer question. safety? Yeah. Don't lie. Please don't lie. Stop lying. You're, you're at the back of my officers, my colleagues. You're not listening to me. You're not listening to the law, mate. You're not I, listening I to the law. Listening. This is public property. There's a different standard for the Trespass Act take, in public property. Take it up a proper way instead of coming up here. Like, what's this no, getting? Why are you listening to a hand-scrawled note that's not even served? Does he have it in his hand? I could verbally ask you or tell you that you're not allowed on if, the property. If I didn't have the right to be here, he has the right to be here. Well, not when an uh, agent of the property has asked you not to. Not on public property, mate. You're confusing private property with public property. We will. Look at this. Four cars and all you cops pulled off the shooting Look, file. You someone, must be proud. Someone, think, right? someone has to decide. No, the courts no. have to decide. Yeah, and the right? courts can decide. That's but right. in the meantime, so if, this is, if, if you feel that this is the best way to de-escalate the situation, but then so be it. Five weeks in a row, is that not enough? They ha have they disturbed five, anybody? Have they bothered weeks. anybody? Have they destroyed any property? That's have they posed a threat? Sure it is. No, if, if you're a security, this is, is this hold my on. first time being hold here? On. Let me, let me. I, I'm talking actually. Let, 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 no, no, I'll, I'll, I'm going to talk. Go ahead. Okay? Feel free to this talk. This is the fifth time in a row. I understand that. Right? They are agents of the property whether you like it or not. Right. This okay, is, I get, I get all the decisions. Hi, they arrested David Menzies. He's in the car right now. No, sure. Go ahead. Like, this is a, like, if a you think this hand, is right? the best way to handle the situation, that's fine. There's courts. I, I there's think the, courts. I think, I think the best way for him just to no, not no, come that's here not the best way. And take it to the courts. The best way. Is that the stuff? best way is to allow Correct. the press to Sir. do their job. That's the best way. You don't and want that, to do that. That's, that's fine. That's, that's your judgment opinion. call. And that's an opinion, right? Of course, it's an opinion. It's a legal opinion. Yeah, that's my opinion. You're going to argue that it's public property. All it that. is public that's property. That's my call. All I know is that they're the agents. Look. They are in charge of the property. They ask them to leave. It's the same so thing. you want to hear my point? No, not really. Then there you go. Point. Then it's not a conversation, right? That's fine by you, me. What you're, what you're doing you is can, doing... You can talk to your co colleagues there. That's yeah. fine. Efren, this is a, a very bad day for the rule of law in Canada. What you may have just seen is David Menzies, a public interest journalist on public property, investigating the misconduct of a public person, the mayor of Brampton. But four police cruisers were sent to arrest him if he didn't stop his journalism. They gave him a hand-scrawled form of a trespass notice. By they, I mean the, the hired guns of the private security firm. But it doesn't affect public property. Public property is governed by the parks bylaw. You can't just have mayors kicking off private people from public property. So this was an unlawful arrest. And I'm gonna confer with our lawyer, Giddy Mammon, and I'm gonna confer with David. But right now, my instinct is to not only appeal this atrocious arrest, but to file a civil suit against everyone involved here. This story about Patrick Brown sneaking into an arena that he banned kids from is an interesting story, but we've covered it already. But far more dangerous is a story of police listening to private hired guns arresting journalists on a public sidewalk. That's why I'm here. That's why we brought a tougher lawyer, Giddy Mammon, with us. And that's why I believe we're going to wind up in court. It'll be interesting to see if they try and arrest the rest of us. But I don't think that security guards, as, as fine people as they are, can stop a, a respected journalist from doing his job. I just don't think that's the way our society works here in Canada. You know, I do a lot of immigration. I bring people from outside of the country to Canada. You know why they come here? Because we have freedoms. We have rights, we have freedoms.
and no, nobody, no cop, no minister, no journalist, no lawyer, nobody is better than the other one. We're all the same, we're all under the same law. That's what I do, that's what I'm looking for here. I didn't come to play games. My time is too valuable to come here and play games in a Brampton parking lot. Believe me, there is a very important constitutional principle at stake. No one else seems to be interested other than these guys. So if you have to arrest them, arrest them. Arrest them, we know what to do next. I, I just don't want to have any problems with you guys. You guys seem like fine people. So, you know, you know the other officer doesn't want to hear from me, that's fine, I, I respect I that. I spoke with a mother whose kids are in summer camp and they see all this, she's fearful for the kids. Well, well, she, she can't be fearful for me because I've never- fear, She's fearful all the I'll, I'll give you my identification. Maybe One second, Ezra. Maybe that'll help. You, you, you know what you can do? You can do, you can take my identification, you can look up, me up, see if I have a criminal record, I have four children, I never had a problem with the law. No one has any reason to be afraid of me. Ezra, I don't know what his record is. I, I'm just, I, to, be to be honest, honest you kids would be more afraid of you with I, I guns and all that than they would have been a suit but this and a binder. This entire production every week for the it's not a production. It's not a production. Look, your job is to de-escalate. This is how you feel you're going to do it. That's okay. That's your judgment call. Fair enough. Here you have a clearly orchestrated response. This doesn't happen naturally that you have four or five cars coming. This was a political decision, and our litigation will smoke that out. And we'll see who your master is and if it was real policing. And this guy here, despite the Private Security Act, will not show his license to me on demand. That's an offense. Are you gonna arrest him? Are you gonna, are you gonna arrest him for that? It's illegal for him to hold himself out as a security guard without furnishing his license on demand. I've asked him about five times. I think you have to arrest him unless you're working for Badger Brown. Sir. I can guarantee you right now, there are fewer Peel Regional Police officers investigating the mass shooting at the cemetery than are here investigating David Menzies doing journalism. And it is not an accident that five cop cars or whatever the number is were dispatched within minutes. If you have a robbery, or a stolen property in Brampton, get ready to wait weeks for the police to get back to you. But if David Menzies has a question for the mayor, well, the police will be there in minutes. There's something rotten in this town and I think only litigation will bring it out. I was hopeful when I came here today that it would just be the mall cops. And listen, mall co there's a place for mall cops, the mall. I was hopeful that the Peel Regional Police would be too busy chasing down the mass shooters to come here. Alas, I was wrong. I'm troubled by the lack of rule of law in this country. The one thing I will say about this time as opposed to the last time is at least they didn't push the cameraman around too. At least there was not a physical assault on our cameraman. And I credit the presence of our lawyer, Giddy Mammon, for that. I'm gonna stick around a little bit longer. We'll see what happens with David. He's still in the police car. That one security guard there, I'm giving him a hard time because he won't show me his security guard's license. He doesn't like it when the rules are applied against him, but by God, he'll push them against David doing journalism. I think in the course of the litigation that is ahead of us, uh, Ezra, we're going to get all the discovery that we need. We're gonna find out exactly what is happening here because I think that video that David took Really, you don't need to see much further than that. Yeah. He embarrassed the pa Patrick Brown by showing that he was there. We saw his hockey bag. Somebody carried it in for him. We all know what he was doing there. He bald face lied about it. It's embarrassing. And to make sure you don't get in his face again, what does he do? He makes sure that you guys are trespassed. So we're here to show that the press doesn't fold, not this press. The press doesn't fold so easily. And somebody is going to be held to account, Ezra. I saw that officer grabbing David and trying to push him off the property. He had no right to do that unless he was arresting him. And he said, no, I'm not arresting him. So David wasn't being threatening to anyone. You know, I, I was here the whole time. You know, I'm so glad you were here because it's those, it's having that calm legal thinking in the heat of the moment. I'm angry because I love my people sure. and I and I love the free, and listen, the story of Patrick Brown sneaking into this arena, that story's old now. It's a month old and we've told it. Well, I'm here because of the police overreaction. 
You know, Ezra, I'm going to tell you, what, what I'm thinking about, David is going to be okay. Nothing's going to happen to David, okay? But what's going to happen, the people who are really going to look bad, David, is not going to even be Patrick Brown. And it's not even going to be these officers who showed up. It's going to be your colleagues in the press, okay, who are letting you fight this fight on your own. They probably want David to be arrested. Not, not understanding, not understanding that if this continues and this goes to other networks and other newspapers and other journalists, that as soon as you say something that is slightly embarrassing to some government official, if something like this is going to happen to you, then we effectively have no press in Canada that we can count on to out the government when they misbehave. That is not the country that I signed up for when my family came to Canada. We came here so everybody is treated exactly the same. I heard the squawking on one of these security guards uh, walkie-talkie. I think they've got a surveillance unit here because someone was saying, oh, there's, there's a camera in the tree line. There's someone, like, someone was calling the shots. I think that Patrick Brown or his flunkies have spent tens of thousands of dollars tracking David and our journalists, and God knows how much has been spent in police budgets. We will fight back, so help me God. I promise everyone, friend and foe alike, we will fight this to the Supreme Court if necessary. It's that important to me. So what did they say in the car, David? Well, I've been, um, uh, I guess if these uh, Paladin security notices of trespass are invalid, uh, we sure got an official one now, uh, boss. It's the, uh, it's a ticket. Um, I think it's for $65. Failure to leave premises when directed, the trespass to property act, $65. David, let me swear on the altar of God. I will spend $65,000 fighting this. And officer 3953 and officer 4002 will be sued for false arrest. And this is the guy who assaulted you. I swear we will fight this to the end. You know, I, I hope to God for, you know, we are we are funded by our viewers. I hope it, uh, law fee, the, the fees will never come to that extent, Ezra. But, uh, you know, I do believe in fighting for our rights. You know, I know these fellows are doing their job, but... Uh, They're not doing their job. That's the problem. They're doing Patrick Brown's errands. Yeah, that is true. And uh, it, it is a sad day. Um, uh, I feel for the people of Peel Region that so much law enforcement resources have to be deployed. Well, there are four cars here today taking off that mass shooting to come here today to take all big old bad you. <laughs> I guess so, I, and I feel bad for that. I feel bad to the taxpayers, and, I, and but my ire is not with these officers. It is with Mayor Patrick Brown. This is a personal vendetta. Well, following orders, we learned, is not, an, is not a legal excuse. I was just following orders. I was just following orders. Yeah, where have we heard that before? I remember that from the Be safe. David, I'm, I, you know what? You're such an amiable fellow. <laughs> You're such a nice guy. You're even nice to your jailers. <laughs> I will be less, less nice. Well, you know, uh, I, the only contempt I have in my heart is for a mayor who is refusing to lead by example, a man who is obviously, in my estimation, Ezra, very petty, very vindictive. Uh, the fact that all of, you know, it's like all of the king's horses and all the king's men have to come to the Earnscliff Recreation Center to shut down the practice of journalism. And we had an excellent lawyer, we have an excellent lawyer in Giddy Mammon, uh, but they just wouldn't listen. And uh, maybe we have to go to a court of law to make them listen. Absolutely. Well, well David, thanks for your courage. And, uh, you know, I'm impressed with how even keeled you are, for I have nothing but bile in me. <laughs> I, I can tell you've got the uh, the eye of the tiger, Ezra, and uh, I know that's going to serve as well in a court of well, law. I, I can't stand for this. Well, thank you for being courageous. And a number of us had come here today expecting and prepared to be arrested, including some of our team here and even myself. And I, I thank you for undergoing that unpleasantness uh, on behalf of not only all of us, 
but on behalf of this freedom that will be tested in this court case. Well, and you know, Ezra, that's the thing. It's for the greater good, isn't it? it this is about taking a stance in the public square, uh, being able to practice journalism without having to be thrown into a police cruiser or thrown behind bars. I, it would be great if the other members of the media, like uh, media, like Giddy said, uh, were so, um, you know, passionate as we are about things like freedom of the press, freedom of expression, freedom of speech, but they're not. So I guess we have to do it. Well, David was put in the back of a police car forcibly, and then he was walked off the property. And you know, David is such a good spirited guy. He was so pleasant with the officers, they had a friendly goodbye as if they were old pals. And for that, you have to admire his good humor. I don't have that good humor because I feel like we have been wronged. Not personally, it's not a personal wrong. It's the Charter of Rights, Section 2B, that all Canadians have has been wronged, first by the private security and second by the Peel Regional Police. And so what I think is so important to do is to take the ticket and turn it around in sort of a judo move. The ticket, I looked at it, it was actually only a $65 ticket. Um, we've spent much more than that on legal costs to be here today. We will spend probably $65,000 in a lawsuit not only appealing this ticket all the way to the Supreme Court, but suing the members of the Peel Regional Police who allowed themselves to be used as pawns by Patrick Brown. You know, I was a little testy with some of the cops here because they were a little too gleeful in smiting the uh, freedoms that they're dedicated to protect. But at the end of the day, I have to remember, it wasn't these cops that made the decision to send four police cars and one, two, three, four, five, six cops. They didn't decide to do that. If they had their way, they'd probably be out investigating this mass shooting at the cemetery. They were directed to do this by someone higher. And I swear to God that we will find out who did that and we will smoke it out because justice demands it for David, but our charter rights of freedom of the press demand it for all of us. And symbolically by walking back here now, before we leave, we demonstrate that we do not bend the knee to Patrick Brown, his paid personal security retinue, or the Peel Regional Police, even if they're directed to be here by some corrupt boss. For Rebel News, I'm Ezra Levant. If you can, please go to journalistdefensefund.com. If you're able to make a donation, sometimes we need to pay bodyguards, sometimes we have lawyer's fees, and we depend on you to pay those costs to bring you the other side of the story.